Hey everyone, this is part four of my trip to Papua New Guinea. In part three, I was talking about going to the jungle, staying there a few nights with the locals, visiting a human open grave, and then coming back to Goroka. So if you haven't seen all that, I'll put a link on the end of the video. So I will just continue with the story. So I'm in my room, the older guy left after having a little bit of a shower or washing himself in a sink or whatever. So I lock my door and I'm just ready to sit down and chill. I was emotionally, physically, mentally absolutely drained and I just wanted to sit down, have some food, chill and stare into nowhere and just think because I just couldn't do anything else. So I opened my backpack to get like a tuna can or whatever and there's no GoPro. So I, I was like, oh no, right, fucking hell, I need to sort this out. So I forgot about chilling and um, I just remember this moment when I'm staring at the wall, I put my fists together and I'm just like this, talking to myself, to the wall, thinking, right, you got this, you're going to sort this out. Bear in mind, this means going out again, going out with the people or with someone. Obviously now thinking, I can't go out on my own, like I need to get someone. So I messaged this cheeky Australian I was talking about in episode two and he didn't have any time, but he got me a contact for somebody who's willing to take me to the Asaro Madman tribe. So it should be some sort of like a guide. So I messaged him and said, can we please meet up regarding the Asaro Madman trip, the money and all the details. But now, would you have time to come to my accommodation and go with me to recover my GoPro? So it worked. He turned up quite fast. And we start walking out of Goroka by this footpath. It's not far, but the road just keeps going. And I have a feeling that that's where they live roughly. So you only walk for five minutes and there's already the bush material houses. So it's quite interesting to see that you have buildings and then straight, like really close to it, you have these people living in a bush. So we're walking that way, also expecting conflict because you don't know what's going to happen if other people are going to get involved how much money they will want i know that i will i have money with me so it's quite dangerous because more money you have you you might get robbed whatever so the only thing is just i'm just hoping that the guide who's with me will possibly maybe translate or sort something suddenly the young lad is walking towards me and then there's the older guy behind him. So I'm thinking that this is random. And I'm asking him, do you have my camera? And he's just looking down like a kid, you know, when a kid does something wrong or an animal, like a dog, looking down, not really want to uh, look into your eyes. And he just look at the, the older guy and say, he told me to steal it. And I'm like, so why did you tell him to steal it? And the other guy says, uh, you didn't pay us enough money. So I said, well... Um, you try to sort of explain, but at the moment it actually doesn't matter. What, like you just have to do what they want you to do. So I said, well, even though I knew I paid enough and I paid so much more, um, but and I asked them all the time, like if they need more. But I think he just knew that there is a situation and he could get more money. So he just asked me for like fifty more kina. Fifty kina is nothing. It's like, why would you? Why would you just not tell me? <laughs> you know, like just. I said you should just tell me. I will give you more money. He's like, well, didn't really explain anything. He gave me the GoPro. The young lad was feeling really like ashamed. But as soon as I got my GoPro and they had the money, everything got forgotten. Like, like nothing happened. There was a few people like looking. The guide was there. But everything was forgotten and like nothing happened. And then we just went and uh, actually seen his house. So it was like random. We would sort it differently. But they just uh, see... A potential for more money or something and they just do what they think is good to do even though it's wrong so anyway got my GoPro so we walk back to my accommodation with the guide and have a chat about how it works so it costs quite a lot of money because you basically need to pay enough money to provide food for the whole village or like the whole tribe so they accept you and they're happy to actually show you their culture and you need to provide enough money for at least like a week or two for, for all the people. So it's actually quite a lot of money. Plus there's the guide. Then you have to pay somehow the transport to get there again. So I don't remember exactly how much it was, but it was a lot of money from my budget. But it, did, it doesn't matter. Like it's so worth it. It's so special, completely unique experience. Never seen anything like it. So 
I just said, whatever number he's gonna say, I'm just gonna pay it. Everything's in cash. So I had to have all this cash with me all the time somewhere. So that was one of the weird things when you're carrying a lot of cash. Anyway, gave him all this. And he said, he needs to go to the village now to tell them that we're gonna come tomorrow. So he left and he said, I'm gonna pick you up tomorrow morning. I can finally relax and have a shower. I know I have a trip organized, the highlight of my trip to go and see the tribe. And, and I just feel really like happy and relaxed at that time. I know I'm locked in my room and I'm safe. And then Carol messaged me, the, the Kiwi guy, the, the helicopter engineer. If I wanna to come to theirs that he can pick me up in, in his car and I can come and see their base. So Carol picked me up and then we go to the helicopter base. So it's this big complex in the middle of the forest with massive gate security, like extreme security. This was like the biggest security I've seen. A uh, massive wall, razor wire, all this guns, mental. Go in, different world. They have their own hotel, restaurant, everything. Like it's just, they, they live there for a month maybe and then they travel back. So back to New Zealand or something. So they need to have all the facilities they need. So we just there sitting, uh, having a few beers, chatting. They tell me that there's been some stabbings in Kudjava, where I just was. Um, and like, I obviously didn't know about it, but it just sort of confirmed how crazy it is that things are happening and maybe you don't know about it, maybe because it didn't happen to you or you haven't seen it, but it just confirmed how crazy it is. And then I've seen uh, or heard some of these stories, what they've experienced in that time when they've been there. Some people got stabbed, like these helicopter guys. Um, so they have the crazy experiences and they can't tell these stories to people when they come home because nobody understand. Like if it never happened to you and you only seen it in a movie, you just can't understand and you can't, you will never understand. If you don't experience the fear and the how close this is and accept that it's actually real, you can't feel it and it's not wrong, like it's um, it's impossible. So I don't blame people who don't understand this, but uh, it was just mind opening, all this crazy, just crazy things. Carol offered me to stay there with them, but I didn't have any things with me. So I asked him to drop me back to my accommodation. But when we get there, the, ga the gate is shut and there's no security guards. So there was nobody to open the gate. So Carl's like, all right, well, let's just drive back and you can sleep at ours. And I don't know, I was either idiot or stubborn. I don't know. Maybe I was scared of them as well. I just wanted to, I felt protected in my room there. So I just thought, fuck it. I'm just going to jump over this razor wire thing. And Carl's just looking at me thinking like, uh, you can't like, surely you're going to get stuck there. Anyway, so next minute I'm stood on his shoulders, climbing over this razor wire fence. And I'm just thinking, I have like these like a loose trousers, which wasn't ideal for that. But I managed, I ripped them, but I managed to jump over it and just like go to my room. And Carl's just stood there like, don't understand what the hell is happening. And it's in the dark and he's just like, I don't think you will ever forget that. And I will never forget this, definitely. So I'm finally in my room and I can have finally some sleep after a few nights in the jungle and all this what just happened. That's it for today. In the next episode, I'll visit the Asaru Mudman tribe. So thanks for watching. If you want to see the previous episode, click here. If you want to see the next episode once it's uploaded, click here. Subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching. Bye!